Now you're the CPS team, and our project is the Hand Assembly Optimization Project. The team is... I'm Bradley Anastasio. Dan Platt. Vivian Nguyen. Peter Bell. And I'm the team lead, Jake McDonald, and our faculty advisor is Professor Wenson. So a quick overview of the presentation. Brad will first go over who is CPS and the problem they gave us, followed by Dan will go over our solution to this particular problem, then Vivian with how we tested the solution, and then David with how what the solution means for CPS technologies. So first off is Brad. So CPS Technologies is a sponsor. Um, they're based out of Norton, Massachusetts. For the past 30 years, they've been making metal matrix composites, um, specifically aluminum silicon carbide or LSIC. Um, they have a couple different key markets, uh, transportation, automotive, telecommunications. Um, they primarily manufacture base plates. Um, those can be found as uh, motor controllers or tire driven trains. And also they make um, heat spreaders for routers and also some armor for the winter. Uh, so the current way that they make these aluminum silicon carbide parts is via infiltration molding. So to do that, first uh, it is a first they stack the molds. Um, there, um, first station. So they uh, put aluminum silicon carbide preforms into graphite molds. Um, the graphite molds are an infiltration tool. Then it moves to a second station where they then uh, tape the molds together. This is to keep the bricks together when we move from station to station. Um, then they uh, insert the molds into the can. Um, there is either two brick or three brick processes. Primarily, it's a two brick process. Um, here's some animations uh, to better illustrate what I was talking about. So here you can see all the molds coming together to form a brick. And then here you can see the bricks being inserted into the can. Um, so the problem they want us to solve, currently there is a lot of labor time spent in this process. It's about, it's around a half hour from brick construction to brick end. Um, and there's a lot of tape used here. There's about 48 feet of tape per can. Um, and they spend about $100,000 a year in labor. Um, so any sorts of savings that we can get in these uh, categories is greatly appreciated. Um, next, Dan's going to talk about how we solve the problem. So, so when we first saw I got this problem, we, uh, we did some initial brainstorming uh, to, figure, to figure out a solution for the problem. So once we got our initial brainstorming done, we then went back to the project request form to figure out what's the figure out the needs that CPS really want out of this project. So the three things they really want out of the project, they want a design that would reduce the process time. They want a uh, design that would uh, limit the use of materials, such as the tape graph well that Brad mentioned. And they also want a design to be really scalable, so that way it can work in any other products that they have. So taking all these into account, we were then able to finalize our design to come up with a design that you see here on the board. So our main desi our design can be broken into two main components. We broke into two main components, which is the base plate, which can be seen here, and the other being the guide slit. So now I'll talk about each of these components and uh, how they work, uh, we're working on the process. So the first uh, design is the guide is the guide sled. But we come up the guide sled design as we need some sort of fixture to hold the bricks in place since we're getting rid of the whole team process to reduce the time and reduce materials. So the way we started with our guide sled design, we we started the plate. We made the plate long enough so it could hold two or three bricks, so that way we could go back to the scalability if the, to do any product line that they had. So once we had um, the, the, the length of the plate decided down, we then have decided we want to add a fixed a fixed wall to the to the design so that way you can stack the bricks up and they're not gonna fall over when they already are uh, stacking them. So once we had those two parts done, we then added a moving wall so that you can uh, push them all in. So so you can push the wall in, the stack the bricks up nicely. Another, another key part why we want to have a moving wall is that we want, again, we want scalability so if we have a moving wall, it doesn't matter how many size bricks are, and the moving wall will stop at, at the size of the brick. So here's a small animation to see what I was talking about of the guys that so it forms sort of like an L bracket, and then the moving wall kind of moves in and stacks the bricks up nicely. So now I'll talk about the base plate. So the base plate, as the name implies, it's mostly just a plate. So on this plate, we, just, we drilled in three sets of two holes. And we did this uh, so, so the stop blocks will look into that. And the stop blocks are um, we, our stop blocks are the device we made up uh, the whole can plates. As in the current process, the can can slide around, uh, can slide around freely on the table. So this isn't good as it could damage uh, it could damage the equipment in the area or our worker operators. And it's also difficult as, as if you're trying to push something in and it's moving as you're trying to push it. So you really you really want to fix this down. So the, so the way we do this, we have two designs. We have the uh, the side stop blocks, which you can be seen here, these are mostly just our rectangular blocks, and then when we, we press for the two pins in the bottom of them, this stops the camera from side to side, and helps the fire line. Another design that we have is the adjustable stop block, which can be seen here. 
the adjustable stop lock, we just took our, uh, stop, our side stop lock design and cut it in half and we put a threaded hole through the middle of it. And uh, we have made a, made a thread screw for plate the end that goes through the stop lock that so we can fix the cam plates more tightly into the baseboard. So here's the uh, see the animation. So you see the, the holes I was talking about here that the stop locks look get into. Um, this, this basically is kind of designed for the P58 can size that CPS has, which is their main can that they have. But in order to, uh, in order to meet the scalability part they wanted, that we can make small adjustments. We can either add uh, more adjustable stop locks on the side, on one side, so they get the different size cans, or they could just drill in uh, more side, more holes into the base plate, so we can move the stop locks in there. So now I'll talk about a lot of our design challenges that we faced. So. The alignment is one of the biggest uh, issues in our project as if the, if the alignment isn't, isn't, uh, isn't right and we're trying to push the bricks and it's just going to crash into the can. So it really, really will become this issue. So the first one I'll talk about is the horizontal alignment. So for the horizontal alignment, we have to go back to the guided sled wall design. So on, this, on, the, on the guided sled wall, we have a two inch overhang that overhangs on over the base plate. So on this uh, overhang, we, we, we machined a 70,000 of an inch step into the wall. And this is the match the thickness of the can, so that when, when the two walls come together, as in that animation I showed you guys, the, when the two walls come together, it hugs nice on the can, and then the interior walls are nicely uh, aligned, so we can just push in, you can push the brick in, it's not going to crash on the side of the can. So now I'll talk about, uh, so, uh, here's a little animation of the, uh, oh, I was just talking about here, you can see uh, the wall coming in to hug onto the can, and you can see the step from there. So now I'll talk about the vertical alignment issue that we ran into. So the vertical alignment is an issue since uh, the, can, the can has a 70,000 inch thickness. So to overcome this, we had to make the gutted sled base uh, 70,000 inch taller than the base plate thickness. Uh, we made it actually 75,000 inch taller just to make sure we had some sort of little safety uh, in there. So if the cans came in a little bit oversized, it would still work for our design. And then and I'll hand it off to Jake and talk about the cost of our design. So this picture new would cost CPS Technologies around $1,300. This includes the Pierce Aluminum order of around $1,200 and the McMaster Car order of around $150. McMaster Car is in order for fasteners, pins, any, any other miscellaneous materials within our design. CPS could lower this price if they already had some of these screws on hand. Now the Pierce Aluminum order of around $1,200 is for stock aluminum. I got this quote from Pierce Aluminum. CPS could reduce this cost by ordering shorter stock because I was forced to Ask for a code of 12 foot stock, and we only need, really needed 5 foot stock. Uh, Dave will also go into a little bit later how we were able to decrease this cost even more. But first up is Vivian with the test procedure. So, for our testing uh, plan, we started off with our initial prototype, and then we wrote um, a work instruction based on it. Uh, afterwards, we revised it for our final design. Um, our, the operators tested the final design, um, and then we observed them for time studies. Afterwards, they'll run the rest of the process like usual. Um, this is a blind experiment because the operators from the second shift are not aware of any changes, which means that they would be checking the quality, um, whether it's acceptable or unacceptable, without any biased opinions. Um, afterwards, we tested for performance, materials used, durability, and we analyzed the time studies. So for the time study results, um, our can was used for two separate processes, one with a three bread can and one with a two bread can. Um, you'll notice that um, we reduced the processing time by 50%. And now David will talk about the cost analysis. Well, we did our analysis on the two per can process. Uh, with that analysis, we were able to save 40% in time, as well as over 90% in tape savings. This equates to approximately $6 per can savings. This adds up to over $54,000 per year in savings for the company. If you actually add in the three uh, brick per can system, then you're up to $60,000 per savings, or savings per year. To recoup the cost of our actual full cost of the full cost of this uh, fixture, we can recoup that cost in a little over six days. Jacob? So this cost savings would be inaccurate if we produced more defective parts with our fixture. 
So we have CPS technologies for their yield data, or how many acceptable parts there are per can over how many parts were originally in the can. So on the left, you'll see their yield data for the past year with a mean percent yield of around 53%, along with a median percent yield of around the same. With our process, we were able to test 14 times at CPS's facilities, and we were able to get a mean percent yield of around 56%, with a median around 53%. Now this tells us that we are in the range of what CPS are currently has, so we're not making more defective parts. So the $60,000 uh, cost savings is around accurate. Uh, next is David. So we had time on our schedule to make some improvements to our prototype. We have noticed that we've been talking about these cans. They, they are welded uh, steel cans. They're not always perfectly shaped, perfectly blank. So we noticed our weld interfering with our fixed wall. So a simple fix for that, and shown in red, is just to cut a small notch in the wall to put a, a relief in for that weld, greatly increasing our alignment uh, per, per process. Another fix was the length of the cans being very variable. They were fitting very tight in some, very loose in others, so again, it was talked about already, being adjustable stop block. This is what takes care of that uh, problem of weld pushing the can up to the guided sled for a nice tight fit. Now there are other options we came up with that they might need, they might not, but we thought we'd give them some options to make this process better. One is right now they're removing the movable wall because this is kind of tall and kind of in the way. They're putting it aside, building up all the bricks, pushing the wall into a line, and then inserting the bricks into the can. So we came up with a movable wall that can be pulled out slightly and folded down so that all the bricks can be made easily, unfold the wall, and then use it for the alignment that's perfect that's made for. Another thing, we greatly reduced the force needed to push the bricks into the can but it's not eliminated. There is still force needed. So we came up with a better pushing tool to help align the, the bricks in and push them into the can. Also, there is still a lot of square cans, cans that, uh, that we can't use our pinch technique to fully align. So we came up with an idea that could allow some uh, out of squareness in our, our fixture to take care of that, that issue and keep the, the bricks aligned well to the can. Also, our, our fixture is aluminum. The can is steel. There is some wear that we notice. We don't know if this will be a problem long term, but we came up with an idea that we can skin the, fit, the aluminum fixture with steel to reduce this wear, as well as they could possibly make the entire picture out of steel if they needed to. Now to the So we started with an initial budget of $1,000. Our initial proof of concept prototype was just MDF, angle, and we were able to learn a lot that our process could help, and we were able to set up, you know, uh, set up the, the system with that. That only cost us around $60. Now, when we made our initial prototype, which eventually became our final design, we would spend a little over $500, plus a little bit of uh, travel expense to go back and forth to CPS. We were still able to see, uh, come in under budget over $250 for this process. Now back to Jake. So CPS, the CPS technology team was slightly ahead of schedule throughout the year. So at the end of the fall semester, we were able to build and test our proof of concept, as David mentioned. Come up with ideas over winter break and create our first prototype. Now as David said, it came out about $500. This is because CPS was gracious enough to allow us to use some of their scrap material and the water jet to make our prototype, uh, cut out the envelope of our prototype. Then we're able to test it at CPS and come up with a final design. So in conclusion, the CPS technology team uh, talked to CPS and they had a process that cost them around $120,000 per year in manufacturing time. We were able to reduce this by 50%, saving CPS technologies around $60,000 per year. Some contributions? And any questions? <laughs>